welcome back to my channel we're gonna do like a get ready with me catch up I'm gonna answer a couple questions I'm sure we'll divert because come on it's me and I'm not home as you can see I'm in Birmingham I'm actually gonna be doing a podcast this morning which is exciting it's with one of my friends Lucy Finnegan she has a new podcast which is called Topic Tuesdays and I've not done a podcast in so long so I'm actually I'm a little tiny bit nervous just because obviously I have my finger in many pies is that the fra that phrase didn't sound right but I feel like that is the phrase but podcast is not one of them we'll just go with that and I've done my odd share of podcasts but I've not, yeah, like I said, not done one in ages, so it's different for me, but I always like to push myself out of my comfort zone, even though I feel like I slept so bad last night, but we won't go into that right now. We need to start getting ready because I have a time limit, which is a good thing for me, otherwise I would be here all day, and my time limit I have actually matches my storage left on my memory card, which again, perfect, so gonna get started I've done my hair first which I never ever ever do but again I just don't want to be running behind and it makes me feel a tiny bit more put together but before we get started I just want to say a huge thank you to Skin and Me for sponsoring today's video I feel like if you watch me a lot you'll know about Skin and Me but I feel like just in case there are some new people it's worth a mention just gonna skim over it really quickly but Skin and Me look I, I just done some stories because I just had to document my skin. I feel like my skin hasn't been glowing like this in a really long time. And I will be honest, like, I don't have perfect skin. I get asked a fair bit, like, what my secret is. And it is skin and me and just being really religious with something because that's when you're going to see results. I used to be one of the people that I'd use something for a couple of days and then swap to something else. And don't get me wrong, there are so many skincare brands on the market and they will have wonderful products. But if you're missing something like this, that is going to be targeting what you want to be making changes on. So that's why I love Skin and Me because all these big skincare brands, they don't actually sit and go through a consultation form and look at the things that you particularly want to work on like Skin and Me does. So in case you haven't heard of them, like I said, you go on their website, you fill out their consultation, they're going to ask you so many questions about your skin and this is your chance to kind of like tell all and say what you want to be looking at, what you want to be targeting, what your hang ups are, if you're trying to conceive, if you're pregnant and they're going to take all that into consideration when giving you your daily dose out each month and it's super cute I feel like it's a great gift idea if you want to say to someone can you get me a subscription for it whether it's a few months or whatever then you carry on paying it but I have a code which I'll leave on the screen and it's a great chance to make the most and give it a try because it's only 4 99 so it's not too much money to really give it a whirl for a month and you will see results in a month and you'll definitely know if you like it and it's for you but I will say it is one of the things where the results just keep getting better as you go along. I think I've been using Skin and Me for almost two years now so yeah and if you've been watching my videos I've got nothing on my skin right now if I come really close it will wow probably put you off your breakfast or dinner whatever you're doing but really glowy like I said, not perfect. These spots come up a couple days ago, but they pretty much don't really, well, like, they offend me for like a day. But then they kind of come to a head so quickly because I've got my skincare down to a T. I'll leave stuff in the description. Definitely check them out. And thank you, Skin and Me, for sponsoring. I'm, I feel organised for once. I've gone through the questions because there's always so many. And I feel like that's why I waste so much time because I just sit and deliberate what I'm going to talk about. I've screenshot about 10 so we'll see how we go. I'm literally going to flip through. These questions are in no particular order so it might be pretty random but first one is did you go to uni? I did go to uni and if you've followed me since day one you'll probably know because I think I did a couple videos talking about fashion and stuff back in the day. I have a degree in fashion and yeah I went to uni when I come out of college. A lot of my friends and people I knew 
did like gap years, took a year off to figure out what they wanted to do, but I'm very happy that I dived straight into uni. It was the year that my granddad passed away and I don't think I would have gone to uni if I'd have left it a year because I don't think I would have been in the right headspace because I'd already started in the September and he passed away in the December and it kind of gave me motivation to do really well because we had like a bit of a running joke that he was like well, don't do uni unless you're going to get the best result that was just kind of like his mentality for everything in life and I just used to say there's no way I'm just not as much as I feel like I'm an overachiever and I like to be the best of the best in some ways <gasps> academically mm, I'll be completely honest with you mm, it's not my strongest point however I made the promise and I really did not want to let myself down and my granddad down so she passed uni with flying colours and I did get a first class degree which I'm still ever so proud of even though I've never used it and in case anyone wants to know I went to the University of Hertfordshire because I'm from Hertfordshire and I didn't want to move to uni I wanted to stay at home and commute so I literally did uni with like none of the fun benefits how funny is that <laughs> have you started weaning ocean yet so I have we haven't done anything major because she's been six months for like a week I did start just before she was six months just because I looked into it and I know that there's signs of your baby being ready to start weaning I know there's some people that start as early as four months um but we left it till she was like just over five months and it was all the things like make sure that they can well to be fair she's been able to sit up for a really long time um but it was like support their head i think sit up might have been one of them but if you type in on like tiktok that's what i did and then i have a weaning book as well which i recommend if you're going to be weaning your baby soon it's the Joe Wicks Wean in 15 and I actually have the Lean in 15 too for myself but I've never read that one <laughs> but I've read the baby one and it's so helpful and it's just giving you an insight in the different options obviously you can do purees, baby led weaning, a mixture and as of now we're doing predominantly purees but I am not opposed to baby led weaning I think it's important to overcome that fear of choking and letting them explore but don't get me wrong I am, it does scare me a little bit so it's something that I'm I mean I've, I've been giving her the odd thing but yeah it's a journey that we've just started I don't think I'll document it too much just because it's one of them things like everyone's gonna do it differently it's something that we all need to do with our babies and yeah, it's not, I don't think it's that exciting to be honest, but we have started weaning and she is absolutely loving, loving food. Quick diversion. If anyone hates their dark circles, puts on concealer and still feels like they can see their dark circles, hit me up. What are we doing about it? Because I go for really light makeup so I feel like I've wearing a really heavy concealer with like nothing else on my skin would just be really peculiar but I don't want to do tear trough because I've heard horror stories so what are, we, what, what are we doing about that? Have you found your social circles have changed since becoming a mum? Um, not really I feel like if your circles are going to change it will probably be whilst you're pregnant because as cliche as it sounds you um you do see who your friends are when you're pregnant but i don't know i just think it's the timing of your life more so and your age that is going to be one of the main topics on lucy's podcast today so i might as well like brush over it slightly so i'm going to be honest and do what you will with this information but i think that quite a lot of friendships sadly i wish it wasn't the case come to an end or fizzle out you drift whatever when you're in the stage of your life and people get into serious relationships but i don't know i think now i have a baby 
I have new perspectives and I just think, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Basically, you will fall out with people in your 20s and that's okay. And a fallout doesn't necessarily mean you've had this massive, huge argument, which I know a lot of you were hoping that I was going to say there's going to be all these big arguments, but sometimes it's just a matter of like difference of opinions and just being like, mm, I don't know if we have the same prospects and opinions and thus completely fine because it would be so weird if we all had the same views and wants and needs and just saying like I'm going to take a step back from the situation we'll see how it goes and then if nothing comes from it then there you go you've got your answer it's so easy to see me put these friendships online and then they're no longer online but that is just life and I think you've got to remember if every single person in the world had to document their life which I do I'm not saying I have to but obviously if you all had to I feel like everyone would have had at least one friendship that split apart and it just so happens that two of mine have kind of fizzled out but I will add a little bit of goss to the mix like I'm completely civil with both parties and I'm sure they won't mind me saying this it's just one of them things like I have a baby I'm 26 it's just something that was maybe so much of a bigger thing especially my, obviously my friendship with Elle um I was just in a completely different world and we were so much younger like I've been doing my own thing we've been doing separate things for like three years now obviously so much can change in that time and I wish her all the best it just it's as sad as it is and I feel like people were more upset about the thought of us as a, like a brand falling apart it just I don't know I'm I feel like I'm waffling I can't really answer this but what was the question have you found your social circles but there is a question there which I screenshotted let me see what it is oh to be honest I feel like because it's newer it's like do you and Molly no longer see each other so me and Molly talk but I sometimes feel like friendships can be like relationships in a way and you're like super intense and that's a lot for anyone and we just got to a stage where we both had really huge life changes. I was pregnant and she was just in a new relationship and now she lives in a completely different part of the country. So naturally it kind of just come to a head and we've drifted. I wanna say I can count on probably like two hands. So a good amount of friends that I've had for some of my, I'd say at least three or four of my friends I've had since I was like three or four years old and they just happen to be friendships that I don't really show on the internet I mean if you followed me for a really long time you might recognize the odd person that I'm out with if I'm tagged in anything but yeah just the two friendships that were naturally online more because of how much, how much time I was spending with them both and obviously one of them was my career so that is literally that's all it is. What would your best advice to a couple before they start a family? You seem like such a great mom. Thank you. That is my favourite compliment nowadays. Ah, uh, who was I talking to this about the other day? I was literally having this conversation with someone and I literally can't for the life of me think who it was. But if I had to give tips. Um, I feel like you know when you're ready. I know they say you never feel ready until you see that t two lines on the stick, but I disagree. I know it's probably different for everyone, but I feel like we definitely knew we were ready, but then I don't know if it's maybe because it was brought to a head because of like fertility reasons, maybe, possibly, probably, to be honest. <laughs> but I also knew in my heart that I felt like I'd done a fair bit by my age and achieved quite a lot of what I wanted to seen enough of the world as in if I had to stop everything just because of ocean because of whatever her wants and needs were I'd feel satisfied obviously not to the maximum there are still many places I want to go to and there's things I want to do but 
if for whatever reason obviously she comes first now we couldn't travel we couldn't do things i had to stop work like i'm just saying like you you have to think like this now when you have a child i could be like do you know what i've done a lot of good things and i'm happy with what i've achieved by no means am i saying anything has to come to a stop but i'm saying like you do need to think like god forbid there is a reason why you can't because your baby will come first now i feel like i just really repeated myself in a massive roundabout way but you know what i'm trying to say um so that's how i knew i was ready because i was like i feel like i've done i feel like i've done a good amount and it's what kind of satisfies you and if you're obviously in a good financial position if you feel like you've got a good base as in like where you're living and you've got a good support system I know that's not always the case for everyone as well and sometimes it just happens like you do end up just having it thrown at you and you have to figure it out and I feel like everyone does eventually figure it out but if you are trying to think like how do I know when I'm ready you don't want to have your baby and I've heard so many people say this quote and say if I could have this <laughs> the amount of times I've heard this if I could have this exact baby and push it back five years I would and I think it's so common and that's okay to think like that but I definitely don't think like that because like I said I feel like I'd done quite a lot before I had her so if you think you're gonna miss your old life or you're gonna be like oh, I wish I'd done xyz then maybe just be like okay that there's my signs I'm not ready Updates on ocean sleep. I'm not going to bore you um, because I know some people literally don't care about the sleep situation. But we've done the sleep training. I think I've got one more day with them. There's different packages. There's, it's different how it is with everyone. We did it with sleeping bunnies. I recommend. It's been great. I can't believe. I still can't really understand the science behind it. And how it all of a sudden means that you have a child that will sleep better. I feel like we absolutely, I can hand on heart say we've completely smashed the, the day naps. Nights are going to be a work in progress, but do you know what? I do just think sometimes you get lucky. And I saw one of my friends the other day and she has a four month old and she was like, I've done nothing and he's just a great sleeper. And she admitted like, I just think it is luck. And it's like the baby's temperament. It's good sign of what their personality is going to be like i can see ocean's going to be very very headstrong how is your intimacy life been since baby i'm three months pp and it sucks firstly three months pp is which is postpartum by the way so like three she's three months post baby is nothing three months that is like what four eight twelve that's like 12 weeks you're not far past your like sign off for being able to have sex anyway but it's more common than not for it to obviously affect your relationship in one way or another. I'm not going to dive deep because I just don't think feel like it's, I don't know. I just think it's different for everyone. But I will say, I think it's bound to affect whether you, you could be a couple that are super intimate all the time before you have a baby. And then you literally are thrown into the deep end with no sleep. You have a baby in your room screaming, crying, and naturally that just becomes a factor that just just kind of sets a different vibe. So don't beat yourself up. I will hold my hands up and say, like, I've had these thoughts like, oh my God, things are ruined in that department, but give yourself time. Talk to your partner. That is the most important thing. I would say bring up the conversation. Find ways around it and make things fun like spruce things up i know three months is so early to leave your baby but plan for near future maybe having a night off or letting maybe your in-laws come and babysit and or like they have the baby i think it comes my main thing is like communication that is like i'm no expert but i swear by you need to be communicating with your partner i'm just looking at my camera because it's saying it's overheating i don't understand but yeah don't be like oh my god i'm like the odd one out no one else is feeling like this because i've been there i've felt it and i know so many of my friends that have had kids are are slash have felt like that and i think it is bound to change i think if someone says to you that they're 
intimacy slash sex life has not changed since having a baby. I personally think, unless they've got a full-time nanny, I think that they're lying. Maybe I'm wrong. Don't shoot me down, but yeah. So you're, you're fine. Just, like I said, talk to your partner. This next one kind of like goes off the last one, I guess, in a way. How do you and Cass find time for each other post ocean? So like I just said, it's a lot of communication. There has been times where we could have got to the point where we like bicker about it and more so me, I think naturally being the mom, I'm like home all the time with her. He has his outlets where, well it's always been the case where I've worked from home, but now I've got like home, work, baby, all under the same umbrella and then he gets work and stuff. I have to remind myself, like, it's not his fault that he has, like, these outlets. And sometimes when he comes home, he, I don't know, might be, like, socially drained. And then I'm like, talk to me, I've not spoken to an adult all day, kind of thing. And we need to make time for each other in that aspect. So they're kind of, like, conversations we've had. And I'm just like, we need to meet halfway and, like... We need to obviously have our time away from ocean that's important but then we also need to have time with her where it's out of the house um but we've had dates we are trying to prioritize doing more date nights because i think again it's just so common this lip liner is so nice <laughs> pillow talk lip cheat charlotte tilbury um i think it's so common the not again like the intimacy thing where you kind of like this baby is your life and it's your whole priority and everything and more and then you're kind of like your relationship slips and i again have seen people i follow so many mums now that like i see these of our influencers bring these conversations to their platforms and they discuss with people how it's more understanding once you're in the position having a baby that some relationships don't work out because the biggest test in a relationship will be throwing a baby into the mix and I think that's where you either come together and get stronger or you realise that you know what this is the biggest test of life and it just so happens it's pushed us in opposite directions but again going back to what I said like I can't emphasise it enough communicate you probably will have some really difficult conversations and you might not agree on things and like I said like when the mum is home the most and then dad's out all the time it is easy to almost feel like you're starting to resent them but that is when you need to just be like this is how I'm feeling I don't want to have an argument with you but like I'm literally talking from experience I've been like we need to make time for us like I miss us and that's okay that is completely fine I feel like for a while I, I found it a bit I felt guilty being like I miss me and Cass as a unit and that's okay to like don't feel like you're just pushing your baby to the side and not thinking about them because we were a unit before her and now we're like a unit of a three but at the same time like we need to be strong in order for our family dynamic to work so for us it's like trying to get time on our own dates making time for each other in the evening whether it's like we come off our phones for a little while we always always had this thing like before we had a baby we always if we can have dinner together sitting at the table that's just our thing i think it's because we've both done it in our family homes we've always like sat down and had dinner around the table i know that's not possible for everyone but it's something that's just stuck for us and been an amazing like baseline concrete thing um but don't get me wrong like don't look at my relationship again it's so easy again like with the friendships it's so easy to look at my life because I put it online and just either pick it apart in a bad way or overanalyze it and be like oh my god it looks perfect and one of the, the next question is how long we've we been together we've been together for four years and I do I've always said I think the four year mark is like make or break <laughs> obviously that's going off my past because i've been in two other four-year relationships or like just before they hit the four-year mark and for me i feel like that's when you're like is this gonna flourish and be like my forever or are we on different paths and i don't know i just think four years just like that pivotal moment where 
it's it or it's not <laughs> and yeah we we will all win we're human we're always going to have little bickers but more so than ever i feel like we are stronger and yeah it takes having some difficult conversation i've really gone into like like um relationship therapy kind of chat right now haven't i but yeah that is how we make time for each other do you know what? i actually think i'm done with my makeup i like minimal makeup i'm so boring aren't i i feel like i look really boring but my outfit's quite cool today so i feel like my outfit's gonna do more than what my hair and makeup is doing but i might put a tiny bit of eyeliner on i think oh, i've got one more do you miss your family home <sighs> do you know what where my family lives so close to me i literally live pretty much over the road to my nan and my brother and that's what what my family home in my eyes is slash was my nan and my brother my granddad passed away i think this year is like eight years ago um so i don't know if this question is like do i miss my family home like my original family home i'd say no because we all kind of moved out at the same time i think if my nan still lived there and life was kind of carrying on maybe i'd like miss like feel like i'm missing out a bit but we all like started fresh at the same time i moved out my nan moved my brother moved and we all just started a whole new life at the same time so no as much as I grew up in the same house, it's crazy, we talk about it all the time, none of us really miss it. It's so weird, I feel like, feel like just because we're, we're really happy in the place we're in now. I just knew that was gonna happen. As soon as I go to close out, it happens every time. I always underestimate how little battery there is when the battery starts slashing, but I just thought I'd quickly get dressed because I said my outfit's quite cool, so I might as well show you. Oh my God, my light. <laughs> this is the outfit so i'll link it down below it's a little leather well it's not obviously not real leather the only thing it's pain in the ass to iron because it just you can't do it too hot because it will melt and cream trousers the mess sorry and then yeah that is me but anyways i'm gonna wrap this here because i gotta go thank you guys so much for watching love you so much don't forget to make the most of my Skin and me discount code, you can get your first daily dose of four nights now, which is amazing. And yeah, let me know if you do end up getting it. And I'd love to hear how you find it. Speak to you in my next one. Love you guys. Have a great week. Bye.